Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for listening in wherever you may be. Heather and I will be talking about our process in creating the atlas that published in the March 2021 issue of the National Geographic magazine about the world's 10 longest rivers and how a majority of them are no longer free flowing. I'll walk us through how we approach this piece and a handful of obstacles we had to make decisions about and why we made those decisions. Then Heather will take over and speak to her artistic process. So our original inspiration for this atlas came from this paper published in Nature in 2019. In their research, Grill and others assessed the connectivity status of rivers globally and found that only 37% of rivers longer than 1,000 kilometers remain free-flowing over their entire length. Of course, dams are a leading factor in hindering river flow and are the primary reason for connectivity loss. The paper comes with a very rich data set and technical documentation about all the rivers they assessed and their attributes. It was clear from the beginning that there was so much data to work with that we could have gone in many different directions when making this atlas. About a year ago, we started working on this atlas in earnest. We decided pretty early on to make the focus of this atlas to be its art and to make it a visually stunning piece that draws the reader in. And in order to do that, we knew we wanted to work with Heather and use her unique combination of skills. Our first draft, which my colleague Ryan Morris drew up, looked like this, where we feature 20 rivers, 10 of the longest obstructed rivers along the top and 10 of the longest free flowing rivers along the bottom. Each river has a gray line to represent its length in comparison to the other rivers, along with squares to represent river volume. This is a close-up of how we might have highlighted some unique features of different rivers. But we quickly realized that 20 rivers was far too many to fit in the amount of space we had to work with. This made us really rethink what the purpose of our atlas was and what our visual goals were. We had this massive data set that we wanted to turn into a work of art. Ultimately, we decided the best way to achieve that was to really simplify the data and communicate the 10,000 foot message of the piece which is, where are the 10 longest rivers in the world? What types of landscapes do they flow through? Are there any shared patterns among free-flowing and non-free-flowing rivers? And lastly, we wanted to communicate the physical geography that these rivers flow through and how human factors may influence and obstruct these rivers. To answer these questions, Heather started to draft up the art, which included mountain ranges, cities with at least 1 million residents, tributaries, and dams. The data we communicated would be very simple and essentially the final takeaway from the research, which is which segments of these rivers are considered free-flowing, which segments have good connectivity, and which river segments are impacted or not free-flowing. We tried to keep some of the infographics of showing which variables caused the most obstruction for each river as seen in the pie chart, but we found that these pie charts took up valuable space that the map needed to breathe and added another very detailed layer of data that would have been difficult to define without a lot of added text. We decided to stay the course and only give the reader on the ground context and history that everyone can relate to and understand and only included information that could be represented artistically instead of detracting from it with more graphics and data. Once we had this vision in place, I then spent a large majority of time researching these rivers, writing the narrative we wanted to tell around these rivers and placing the map labels around Heather's art. The atlas is a gatefold where there's one flap that opens up to reveal the main map. So on this flap, on the left side of the screen, I needed to succinctly introduce the research and describe the problem of obstructed rivers, sandwiched by Heather's illustration of what a massive and well-known dam looks like, the Three Gorges Dam, and a map introducing the reader to the rivers of interest. When you open the flap, each river has a note, and each note could only be two short sentences. So I spent a lot of time researching different facts for each river, that were different enough to be a new interesting fact on the page, but similar enough to create a pattern or theme among the rivers with the same free flowing status. For the map labels, I made all the river and mountain range labels curved to make them feel like part of the art and to allow them to flow, pun intended, with the curves of the rivers and natural features. 
In contrast, with a few exceptions, most of the dam and city labels are horizontal to differentiate them as human features. So altogether, we chose to make the initial impression of this map to be a beautiful piece of art. We reduced the amount of data that we included from the original research and instead focused on the types of landscapes these rivers flow through to give a sense of the physical geography and potential obstacles that a river faces as it flows downstream. So this is the primary data that Christina gave to me. Um, the first thing I had to think about was projection because we weren't going to show the rivers on a world map. We were gonna show them all next to one another. So what projection could I use to compare a bunch of different rivers from different parts of the world? I decided to go with the two-point equidistant projection. I got the two points from near the start and near the end of each river. Then I exported these really simple maps of just the backbone of each river, each in their own custom projection, but all at the same scale. Once I had all of those, I could begin trying to arrange them on a page. Like, could I even fit 10 rivers on a page? Um, what difference did it make if we had a full gatefold instead of just a regular two page spread, which at this point wasn't decided. And there was also this question of straightening the rivers to make them fit better. Uh, but I ultimately decided I didn't want to do that. I was really interested in the shapes of the, of the rivers. I thought that was a really important and interesting characteristic. So I wanted to keep that. Anyways, uh, figuring out how to make these fit consumed a lot of my time. Um, but in the meantime, I also had to figure out how to draw the rivers. So I made this prototype of the Yangtze with watercolor. Uh, actually, the watercolor was in a pen. And in person, I quite liked it. But when I photographed the map, I just hated it. I just found that it picked up too much of the paper. And when I scanned it, it picked up not enough. Everything was really flat. Um, I've had this problem with watercolor before. I just, it's, I think it's a medium that's very difficult to translate into a digital format. So I decided I didn't want to spend all of my time fighting with the medium. And I switched to pen and ink, which I hoped would work better in a scanner. Uh, it really did work better. Uh, here is my pen and ink test of the Yangtze. And here's what it looked like after I used Photoshop to gray out the mountains and add some labels. I was really happy with this, so I decided to use it as my prototype for the rest of the rivers. But in the meantime, I'm still trying to decide how to arrange them. This one is pretty close to the final arrangement with 10 rivers. Uh, I got the green light to work on this layout, so I started working on drawing the rest of the rivers at this point. Here is the third version of the Yangtze, and you'll see there's a lot more drawing in this one. Um, most of it does get erased in the final piece, but at this point it was hard for me to tell what marginal areas I would need it to include or not, so I just drew all of it. I used this natural earth layer for most of my reference, especially for the terrain. Um, for the mountains, one of my challenges was deciding when and where they're important enough to draw. And I based that uh, less on the physical size of the mountains and more on their significance to the surrounding terrain. The other challenge was converting this hillshade texture into little hill drawings, um, trying to maintain the character of different mountainous regions but also staying within a consistent style, that was probably the funnest part of the project. So here's all of the maps combined. Uh, you can see that I've erased the marginal drawing as much as needed to provide a buffer around each river. But at this point, we have a problem, which is that the editors felt that the rivers should be going the other way. So as you read from left to right, you would follow the rivers from their sources to their mouths the same way the water flows. And right now it's going the opposite way. Uh, I agreed, but um, unfortunately I could not find an arrangement that met this criteria and still respected the gutter. So what was happening when I flipped them was just too much information was falling into the place where the magazine folds. So we decided in instead to turn the map sideways. Um, and this is a bit odd because we're forcing the reader to physically turn the magazine to read the map, but it means all the rivers can flow down, which is really nice. Unfortunately, it also meant that 
all of the mountains were now sideways and um, the whole thing had to be redrawn, scanned in pieces and stitched back together. So here is the new map um, after photoshopping. There's still lots of details to take care of at this point, like softening the edges of each of the drawings, deciding what parts will extend over the margin, and adding details like the legend and north arrows. Uh, I also drew a locator map and an illustration. And I, I made this illustration with the stippling style to map, match the style of the maps. But in the interest of time, I'll just jump now to the final product. Um, here we have the cover of the map and a detail with the text and labels uh, added by Christina. So for me, this project was really exciting for a lot of reasons, but one of them was just learning about these rivers, you know, these fantastic giants, they're connecting really diverse landscapes. Um, and I spent a lot of time with each of them. At first it was just cruising along the satellite imagery, trying to find dams that weren't in the data set, but um, mostly the time was spent in drawing. And, um, you know, I spent a lot of that time thinking about the shapes of the rivers and of the settlement patterns, the terrain which I, I think really is the privilege of taking this slow route to map making and hopefully also the thing that comes across for the map reader. So hopefully we're conveying the feeling of this story rather than just the data. Thanks very much, everyone. And if you have questions about this project, please just paste them in the Slack channel. <laughs>